Hey everybody, Ronaman here. Thanks for tuning in to episode 15 of Stationeers. So last episode we did a lot of the outflow uh, plumbing in the base here. And we also set up all of the remaining filters and set colors and stuff like that. Uh, this episode I am going to do the inflow, the pulling from the uh, Atmo. And we will set that up uh, right now. That's that's the that's the plan. So that means that uh, I need an intake. So this here, this pipe here is my intake. It first filters into nitrogen and then all the other gases. I'm gonna actually work from the top down. Um, and what? Oh, I'm missing a vent here, aren't I? Okay, let me see. I have passive vent right here. Good. I prepared to not have everything I need. Now, it's not perfectly symmetrical because, of course, the greenhouse doesn't have a roof. Um, okay, let's drop that other vent. Goodbye, vent. And... I'm also going to need to remove... Oh, you know what? This all should be pink. We decided that our inflow will be pink. Our outflow is purple. That is our color code. Yellow will just be like... Um, in progress, so to speak. So let's paint that pink. Yellow will be like uh, unlabeled, you know. Uh, and eventually I probably won't have that much yellow in the base as a result. Alright, so this corner. And... Oops. This corner. And this will be pulling. Now the thing is... I need to decide how I want to pull gas. So I have three uh, regulators pushing gas. Um, I'm going to... Hmm. The thing is, I don't know if back pressure and pressure regulators can move enough volume. So I've been thinking pretty hard about do I want volume pumps to be doing this? Do I actually want to um, have volume pumps really moving air around uh you can set volume pumps to really really low volume uh but i think even at really low volume they would uh move air through the system a lot faster and i can add a volume pump pretty much anywhere within this system so right now all i'm doing is uh setting up the plumbing so that i can have said volume pump or whatever uh, additionally i think i'm going to move these pass events that i have set up uh a i need more pipes there we go and then b uh the further the passive vents are from the rest of the vents um the better so let me take a look at my bottom floor yeah i'm gonna move the passive vents on the second floor a bit i'm gonna put them uh here and yes they're floating i know some things can be draw uh, installed floating like this not everything but uh plumbing can uh, a lot of the electrical stuff cannot just uh just an fyi okay so uh we are going to bring these gases in, oops in like this oh uh i need to have it bump out further oh boy it's gonna be hard for me to nope actually it's not that hard I want to avoid the uh, elevator a little bit more and what it could do if I really wanted to I could have I could easily fill up the base with um, I could decide to fill up the base with carbon dioxide, so I could temporarily change this whole system so it's 100% CO2, which I could obviously acquire a lot of, and run a flow test with pure CO2. So here you have the inflow and the outflow running next to one another. Not that that's a problem, just pointing it out, but I'm down to my last pink pipe. So let me jetpack. Install it and crank out some more piping. Oh, yes. 
It's like a redstone, right? I don't even know why I'm collecting that. Um, how much iron do I have? Let's get a quick... About 80 there. 45 there. Zero. A bunch. All right. We probably don't need more iron smelted, but I'm going to smelt it anyway. We have enough to make another batch of steel in here, which I think is good. So I don't think I'm going to do any more iron smelting. Uh, additionally, what I need to do to really prepare for the uh, atmospherics is also add to the power grid. Um, the very few solar power panels I have on the roof are not going to be able to drive enough power to everything the base needs. Um, four solar power panels is a pretty paltry amount. However, I have all the solar logic all set up, so adding additional solar power panels to the base is actually insanely simple. Just sort of plug and play, uh, more or less. All right. Um, we don't want to turn the pink pipes yellow. We want to turn the yellow pipes pink. So far, I haven't screwed that up. Which is surprising. I really thought I would by now. All right, so we have uh, inflow for four out of six. Uh, what I'm going to do here is actually uh, remove some of the pipes I already have laid out and replace them as they uh, as they'll need to change colors anyway. Where did this pipe go? Uh, that is a mystery. I'll have to probably remove some frames to figure that one out. Alright, so this... First off, I'm going to have this run to the nitrogen input. Another thing is, um, this pipe has a lot of volume here. Uh, we don't necessarily need to immediately start filtering whatever is in this pipe. Uh, it actually can be, uh, for lack of a better word, ignored and at a certain pressure triggered so that we only keep the filters on when there's um, enough um, buildup in the system to require it. Uh, so what I'm going to do right now is, no, I didn't mean to drop my wrench. I'm going to remove a lot of the active vents because they prevent me from setting up a permanent system um, in the way that I want to. Uh, Alright, so pink pipes. Let's see. And I can, I'll, I now that I have a lot of piping for the inflow, oops, uh, I can move these active vents somewhere more convenient. Uh, that's the idea here. So let's remove some of this cabling. Um, actually, that just runs to that vent. That's not a cable that's all that necessary. All right. Now that we've done that, oops. There we go. This is our inflow here. So this will run out to the back of the base. Just like this. Actually, let's make this even cleaner. We don't even need to make it curved like that. There we go. Inflow. Beautiful, beautiful inflow. Now, uh, we have inflow from this vent here that we need to add to this system. I'm trying my, my damnedest to try to make this clean and easy to interpret. Um, removing all of the excess junk, so to speak, uh, just so that it is an easy to understand system. There's no need in my mind to complicate it. It's pretty simple. You have intake, outflow, done, that's it. That's really the whole kit and caboodle.
All right, so now doing a quick assessment, it looks like we've got one, two. This one's not hooked up. All right, I'll hook that one up. And then I'll need to add some more uh, act events. The purpose of the act events, of course, is to um, is to make sure that uh, we are pulling nitrogen and oxygen from the atmosphere so that we can eventually have it. That one's hooked up. The plumbing is a little little obscured, but the purple was in the way. Uh, I can actually... Hmm, let me fix that. I'm going to make the purple not in the way. Just... I'm going to appreciate this later. So they don't intersect. I'll bump this out. One more tile. And that way it won't interfere with uh, pink at all. It does mean I need more purple pipes, but that's fine. I had 10 right there ready to be shaded. Purple system is all set back up. Then let's fix the makeshift piping I added here because it's not needed to be makeshift anymore. So this still will be a four-way junction, but it will be four-way like that. Oops, I never actually placed it. All right, straight corner. And the, uh, the reason why I have the pipes as simple as possible is that if anything goes wrong, it will be really easy for me to troubleshoot if it's simple. If it's complex and all overlapping all over one another, uh, it's going to be very difficult for me to troubleshoot. So here, just from a glance, I can see inflow is pink. And it's very, very easy to sort of track down all of my inflow uh, at a glance. You can see... Each floor has two, they're all pass events, they're all roughly in the same spot on each floor. And then outflow, um, there's one, two, three, four, and then there is the bottom floor, which is here, boom. Six and six. Uh, that's about as simple as I could make it. Let's put the pink paint away. Do I guess what is becoming our paint box? Okay, very nice. Uh, there's absolutely nothing to do with the. I guess I need a, a little bit more NO2 piping, but there's nothing to do with these gases right now. The NO2, the um, the pollutant, or the volatiles. I'm not using them. Um, a pipe that is open like this. Uh, doesn't have flow, so it won't leak. It's just, uh, imagine it being capped. Actually, if you look at it, it kind of looks capped, because you can't see into it. Uh, the next thing I need to do is back to standard yellow. Uh, so let's go grab a little bit of yellow piping. And... What we're going to be doing is actually adding filters to everything. So, this pipe right here that I'm laying down is very, very quickly going to fill up with carbon dioxide um, because everything that's coming out of the O2 filter um, is CO2. Uh, pretty much and a little bit of X that is what's in here. So if I look mostly co2 and X and it's going to become pressurized really quickly So what I need to do is to add a co2 filter into the co2 tank or to the filtration unit so co Filter uh, let's see I want a heavy filter for carbon dioxide I'm going to make two of them. I'm also running out of Electrum, uh, as I can see that. So Electrum 
just a quick reminder is equal parts gold and silver um, I don't think I have any silver sitting around so that's gonna have to be something I hunt for soon just making sure there's no pipes laying around that I've forgotten about. So I'm gonna make two of these heavy, well, no, I'm gonna make just one for now. This lasts for 20 hours, this should be enough. All right, done. So now that uh, that filter is there, the CO2 will start to get filtered once again into the fil uh, CO2 tank, uh, which is good. That means that this tank, this pipe here, will stop getting hyper-pressurized for carbon dioxide. Uh, which means I'm actually going to remove this pipe. I should have put the filter in first. I'm removing the pipe because I don't want a hyper-pressurized uh, pipe. It was going to be a long time before that exploded, but um, yeah. So we need to make a water filter, a pollutant filter, and a volatile filter, but I'm not going to be able to afford uh, all the heavy filters for this. Uh, so what we're going to do is run a pipe from the unfiltered just like this and I am out of pipe imagine that being out of pipe um, let's make the pipe first my uh, beautiful nuclear battery is all charged up actually drain the kit battery uh, not a lot, but enough to be noticeable. I could always, always settle for now for small filters on these other atmospheric units. Um, I do, I will do a large water filter and a large um, X filter. In fact, honestly, this should be X. Uh, I'd like it not to be, but it makes more sense if it was. Because, uh, so we'll grab our khaki color in a second. Because if I'm pulling in uh, air from the world, uh, I will need to filter the X. I will not need to filter water. There is no water in Martian atmosphere in stationers. So yeah, let me fix that. Let me f switch water and X. And that way, um, it will be a little bit more efficient. All right, so my khaki and my blue, and I'll gotta label them too. Did I just put my, yeah, I just put my wrench away. This makes a little bit more sense. Neither of these uh, have gas yet, so it doesn't really matter that I'm doing this. And... Done. Done, done, done. All right, we'll put these away. Used for later. Now we're going to need our beautiful labeler to correct everything. So, pollutant filtration, pollutant tank, pollutant water filtration. Water and water tank. Uh, so, just to reiterate, it is because in Martian atmosphere you can see find these four gases here. So it makes sense that these four gases are the first four in the lineup. So that if I am pulling in a Martian atmosphere, um, 
which I still am through these past events. Uh, proof of that would be that the pressure in my uh, CO2 tank would be visibly rising, and it is, as you can see, 92, 93. Um, these four, if I am pulling in Martian atmosphere, these four need to be um, on, and these can be off, and that's why I switched this around a bit. Because it makes sense. All right. Beautiful. So I have my CO2 filter there. Uh, let's see. I need a pollutant filter. And then we'll actually start pulling in pollutants and I'll power that on. So I want a heavy pollutant filter. Any sort of pollutants that your base has is toxic to you. It is um, chlorine gas, like mustard gas. Uh, normally, there is not a whole lot of it. Like Martian atmosphere only has a teeny bit. But even at like 1%, it would be unbreathable. It'd be toxic to you. Um, fortunately, the plant called the fern... Whoa, that was a huge jump. I don't know what that was all about. If I open up this, if I plant ferns, ferns actually convert or pull pollutants out of your atmosphere. So if you have a little bit of pollutants bleeding into your base somehow, I don't know why that would be a case. But if that was the case, um, you could actually just uh, grow some ferns and the ferns would pull pollutants out of the air in your base and and remove it and the ferns use pollutant to grow uh, so it's yeah so if you're running into a pollutant issue uh, that is your answer there is just go ahead and grow some ferns I know it sounds strange but all right so now if we flick this thing on boom Again, a little bit more use of, of power, but this will, should, yes, indeed, immediately is becoming pressurized with pollutant. Not a whole lot of it, um, but it is nonetheless. So, uh, yeah, we are now filtering all of Martian atmosphere. Uh, this pipe, of course, will be underneath flooring eventually uh, in the permanent construction of the base. So it's not going to be a constant, like, little road bump. Uh, it won't be a problem. All right, next thing's next. Uh, let's put some stuff away. Trying to stay organized. One of the things is if you constantly have construction projects in progress and you don't put anything away and you don't organize anything, uh, you will be massively confused as to like what you need to do because you're going to just have piles of junk um, lying around. So the next thing I want to do is add some inflow, some installed permanent inflow. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, oh, that is already free, free floating. And that's not a drill. Is grab all of the active vents that I had on before. One, two, three. And actually, you can see this pipe burst. That active vent was pulling Martian atmosphere um, continually until this pipe hyperpressurized and blew up. And that's what a ruptured pipe looks like um, when they explode. So go me for exploding a pipe. So in the back here, I'm just going to install... Uh, maybe I'll do it like this so they pull from slightly different spots. I don't know if spacing really matters. I just, I think it, it does. Oh, and here's another ruptured pipe of the other active vent that was just um, uh, idle and being ignored. And I can now remove this piping. And any pipes that explode, you don't get refunded. So you might have just noticed that. So these are all technically inflow. Uh, they might not be permanent structures in my base. I might not always have these vents, but for now, we'll treat them as inflow. Um, 
and this is going to help to pull more Atmo into my filters and thereby giving us more th more oxygen and nitrogen in our tanks. And that's what I've been doing this whole time, uh, ever since I got them constructed many episodes ago, so that we could uh, pressurize the base sooner, because it takes a very, very long time. Martian atmosphere oops, is pretty thin, and it will take a very, very long time to pressurize all that stuff, uh, to pressurize the base to a level that is even breathable. Uh, it takes a bit. It's a lot faster when you have a teeny, teeny little hovel, like I did, um, here. This has a volume of 1 by 2, sort of 1 by 3, once the airlock is reversed, opened on the other side. Uh, if I count up the volume here, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 by 1, 2, 3, 4... Plus all, so, tw you know, uh, just a Fermi estimate. This is about a, a volume of 100. I'm not, um, you know, I'm just trying to Fermi it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, what is this Fermi thing? It is just an estimation method. Rough estimation, orders of magnitude. So, you know, is my volume 1,000? No. Is it 10? No. It's somewhere around 100, if I was to calculate it. If I have um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 by 4, 20, 20 ish per floor, that's 60 plus some elevator shafts. That's like 65, 70 volume or so. Uh, so it's, it's voluminous. It's 20 times, 30 times more voluminous than my original um, little hydroponic farm. Um, Okay, so now we're going to hook up these activants to the inflow so that we can start um, really, well, continue, not start, but continue to pull um, Martian atmosphere into our filters. And then additionally, I'm running pretty low on cabling, but I have been... I have been smelting copper in my arc furnace. It is sort of a beautiful thing to have not f unlimited power, but enough power that I really don't have to worry. I've been keeping the lights on. I've been not careful about how much uh, power I've been using. Well, that's cute. I run over to try to pick up the pipe and it starts rolling away from me. So as you can see, we have quite the rainbow collection of piping, but every pipe has its own purpose. It's all separate. It's all um, color coded to label function, to label contents, that kind of thing. All right, we're just gonna crank cables out until this thing runs out, which is right now. So these additional cables are going to power up our um, activants here. So let's get those squared away. It's a little weird because this activants uh, power input is sort of subterranean in nature. Uh, and I think I laid out the cables wrong. I can't really see what I'm doing here. I don't really want to dig because if I dig, it's sort of permanent. Meaning that uh, you can dig, but you can't remove um, You can't really or you can remove soil, but you can't really replace it. There's no like fill like there is in Minecraft for instance. So I'm trying not to do that. Meaning that some of the cabling that I'm putting down here is probably pretty permanent. But it's only a teeny, teeny bit of copper and I might not ever really see it. So yes, it is like a landfill, sure. Uh, 
but luckily this is a video game and I don't have to worry about polluting. Which is to say, uh, there's no way to pollute the atmosphere of Mars. Mars Martian atmosphere is static. Um, it can't really change. Oh boy. Set inward, vent on. Is that vent even going to work? No. The answer is absolutely not. Uh, so you know how I was saying I wasn't going to dig? I lied. I am going to dig a little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll dig with my pick, just because it's a little bit more sensitive of a, of a tool. The mining drill I have only digs giant chunks all at once. The pick is powerless and only changes the terrain slowly. Still probably more than I want, but all right. I haven't deformed the terrain so much as to say it's ugly now. I've just sort of flattened things out like an excavator would. All right? All right, so inflow, inflow, inflow. Um, belt off. Swap to the tool. Belt. Belt on. Grab my... My um, atmospheric analyzer. At some point... Um, at some point, the CO2 tank will become more pressurized than all the other tanks because the atmosphere is mostly CO2. And as you can see, it, the atmosphere is barely... Uh, it X says 1%, but it's actually less... It's about, about half as much O2. So if you check per mole here, 9 moles, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, and 0 0.06... Um, there is a lot more nitrogen than there is oxygen and a lot more oxygen than there is pollutant. So there's not a whole lot of pollutant, but if I want to generate pollutant, all I have to do is capture gas from a furnace. Furnaces produce a lot of pollutant. And I actually have a fair bit of nitrogen and a little bit of oxygen. Probably not enough to truly pressurize a base, but, um, not nothing for my efforts. Not nothing. Uh, so next up, I would like to have some nice displays. I would like to do... Oh, I found you, Mr. Pipe. Trying to hide from me. I would like to hook up some displays to my tanks so that I can see from a, a distance what are in them without my um, analyzers. Uh, but that will have to be for next episode because I am out of time for this one. So if you have any tips, tricks, feedback for me of any type, drop me a line. Keep in mind that this was pre-recorded. Uh, so I won't be able to address your feedback uh, in real time, but I will once I am recording live episodes once again. And thank you all very much for watching. I'll catch you all later. Adios.